I always like students to remember that leadership is earned. Often it's that you start small and you just sort of remind yourself, well, what is a leader to you? So are you a good listener? Are you a good communicator? Are you the person that your peers are coming to for help? So a few things. Number one, know that you, you sort of want to start small. I always like students to remember that leadership is earned. Sort of being a leader is a great responsibility and something that's earned sort of with trust and experience over time. So often it's that you start small and you just sort of remind yourself, well, what is a leader to you? So are you a good listener? Are you a good communicator? Are you forming connections, important connections and trusted connections with other students in your dorm or in your classes? Are you the person that your peers are coming to for help or assistance or things? So that's a way to sort of start small and think about to sort of build your skills and your confidence. You know, what particular skills might you offer to a leadership position and sort of to grow your confidence in that. Usually I would say those sort of formal designated leadership roles you're going to see in junior and senior year is really when those opportunities come about to have that, that sort of formal leadership position. I think it's also really important to remember that leadership can look a lot of different ways. And I think boarding schools and colleges are starting to shift this idea of what a leader is. Not everyone can be captain of the team. But we also need people doing things that are really important, supportive roles, being really key members of the team in different ways, and quietly doing something that's moving the whole group forward. And so just know that even if it's not this very specific sort of titled formal leadership position, that there are a lot of ways to be recognized as an important leader, player, supporting role in a lot of different organizations. So first, it's important to know that some things are negotiable on campuses and some are not. At the school I worked at most recently, all students had kitchen duty. So you could send an email and try and switch your kitchen duty with someone else, but you had to do kitchen duty. Maybe it was a different week. Other schools have a required number of community service hours, but they, they aren't specific about what you're doing to accumulate those hours. But know that there can be a range of things. Often community service is seen as a way also that boarding schools are contributing to the community sort of outside of their campus. That can be wonderfully important and rewarding to do for a lot of reasons. Um, if you are not averse to community service work or you have to do it, but you would like to do something quieter and the idea of doing something that's 30 minutes away or where you're cleaning up a beach doesn't appeal to you at all, there can be quieter or more campus-centered ways to do that. So for instance, I worked with a group of students where they cut and knotted up blankets that were delivered to a women's shelter, a shelter for women and young children in the closest city right before the holidays. So that was something sort of quietly done over a period of hours and I think there was a real sense of doing something good for others that would be needed and enjoyed and appreciated and they put many hours into it, but it was done on our campus in a quiet room with them being together. So there's lots of projects like that and then there were also groups of students I took to soup kitchen nearby, to beach cleanups, to other areas where things outside of the community needed to be done. So just know that there's a range and sometimes there will be whole days or whole weekends devoted to community service at a particular school and they will give you sort of a range of options to do 